we're going to start off by discussing a little bit about objects and classes inside of Python. Now, objects and classes are sort of like a general programming concept, and they're a way that we can represent data in our programming languages. Um, if you recall, when you learn things like variables, every variable has a data type, right? There are strings, there are lists, there are integers, there are floats, and so on and so forth. Now, oftentimes when we're programming, we want to be able to represent more complex data structures. I'll give you a general sort of idea. So suppose that I were, you know, working in a company of some sort, and I want to be able to represent employees in my program. Now, employees are going to have a lot of different attributes or properties associated with them, right? An employee could have like a name, an age, a salary, a job title, and so on and so forth. I want to be able to represent all of that data in a single entity. So without using objects, you'd have to have like multiple variables to keep track of it or multiple lists to keep track of it or something among those lines, right? With objects, we can represent them all in a single variable known as an object. So we're going to go ahead and demonstrate how we can create these sort of employee objects and discuss some of the important properties and ideas that are associated with them. The first thing that I'll discuss is the idea of what I'm referring to as properties. Properties are things that allow us to describe the object. They're things that every single object is going to have. So when I talked about employees, for instance, I could say, well, every employee is going to have a, um, a name, they're gonna have a job title, and they're gonna have maybe a salary, right? So those three things we could say that they're always going to have. So those would be the properties of our object. Now we're also able to manipulate or do things to those properties. So for instance, I could, you know, raise the salary of my employee or I could lower the salary of my employee or I could change their job title. Um, we might be able to change their name, for instance, if they get married or something like that, their last name may change. So those are the sort of things that we may be able to do with our properties. And these are typically referred to as methods. Methods will allow us to interact with our properties and properties are just things that tell us about our objects. So keeping that in mind, let's go ahead and create our employee object. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click and I'm going to create a new Python file. And I'm going to call this one, um, we'll call it employee. All right. So once we load our Python file, what we're going to do is we're going to declare a class and we're going to call this class what we want to call our object. So classes and objects, um, the difference is that an object is a single instance of a class. So the class outlines the way that the object is going to be structured and then the actual object itself is like declaring a variable of the type of the class, right? So it's like a single instance of the class versus the general class. So when we're defining the object, we're going to start by creating a class. And the way we do that is by typing in the keyword class. They're going to give this class a name. Now it's typical convention that the name is going to be the same as the actual file name itself. So we could say class employee. And then we put a colon and then everything that's indented is going to be a part of this employee class. Now, the very first thing that we typically do with our class is we define our initialization. So what happens when somebody declares a variable of type employee? So we can say def, and then we're going to have a special type of um, type of uh, sort of function, which I'll more refer to as methods. When we're working inside of classes, we refer to these functions as methods instead of functions. That's just sort of like the terminology for it. So what we do is we put in two underscores and then we type in it in it and then two underscores again. And then you'll see in brackets it automatically adds this self. So there's a few different things to take in here. When you put these two underscores in front of it, it's a special type of method in Python. And essentially it takes over the initialization method. So when we declare an object that is of type employee, this initialization function runs every single time that we declare a new instance of it. So this sort of like initializes the object itself. This self portion here essentially means that when we utilize this object, we're always going to be referencing um, things that are you know specific to the object itself. So what happens is if we want to reference an actual property of the object, we use this self keyword to tell Python that we're representing um, you know something that belongs to the employee class rather than just belongs to the, to the program in general. So to give you a better idea of this, if I want to say that every employee is going to have a name, I could say self.name, right? 
So this is giving the employee a property called name. Self.name essentially means that we're representing the employee itself. So the class of type employee has a property called name. So we reference it by the self.name. That means that we're representing the actual like property associated with the employee class or object. So what we could do is a general sort of initialization, we can just like set these properties to be like just sort of like default values. So I could say like name equals a blank set of quotations. I can say self dot um, job uh, title equals blank set of quotations and maybe like self dot uh, salary equals zero, right? So this could be a general idea of initializing our actual object is that we sort of like set these uh, default properties, right? So like once we create an employee, they'll be given these three properties, which would be name, job title, and salary, and they'll be set to these default values. So then from there, we can sort of like set the values as we'd like. Now, rather than doing this, we can actually ask the person to provide arguments for when they want to declare an employee. So they could say um, self, and then they can put in like, um, say name, uh, job title and salary. So maybe they need to provide us those three pieces of information. And then we could say self.name equals the name that they provide to us. And then the job title is equal to the job title they provide to us. And the salary is equal to the salary they provide to us, right? So from here, you can sort of see the idea of self coming into play as well. You see that we get passed in name as a parameter, right? So how do we differentiate between the name as in what's being passed into the function and the name as in what the actual property is that the um, that the object actually owns, right? That's how we use that self keyword. So we say self.name as in the property name is equal to the name that was provided by the function. Now this property doesn't necessarily have to be the same name as the property. This is a general sort of convention that's usually used. I sometimes tend to stray away from this because it tends to be a little bit confusing, but this will be something that you'll likely see when you're programming in Python and sort of like programming out in the real world, right? So I like to sort of demonstrate it in this way so that you can actually see what a lot of people tend to do. So now from this, we can go ahead and create ways to be able to access and change the values of these properties, right? These are typically referred to as getter methods and setter methods. Getters are able to get the value of a property and setters are able to set the value of a property. The reason why we use getters and setters is because ideally someone shouldn't be able to access and change these values in unexpected ways. What I mean by this is that, so when we declare an object of type employee, you could theoretically just say like employee.name equals this. This is a bad practice because someone could potentially input something invalid. For instance, let's take a look at salary. If someone says like employee.salary equals negative one, right? If we have calculations based on salary, they might do something wonky because they input it in a negative salary, which we weren't expecting. Using getters and setters, we're able to control these values so that they're only values that we actually want to allow. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few getters and setters. If I want to create a function to get and set the name, First, I can create the one to get the name. So we'll say def get name. And again, it always takes in that self argument as the first argument. That's a default thing, right? Just that way it knows that it can reference these properties that exist. So if I want to get the name, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to return self.name. So essentially, whenever someone calls this get name method, what they'll get in return is the name property. So that's a way that they're able to access that name property. Similarly, if we do something like um, set name, right, I can provide a name as an argument, and then I can say self.name equals the name that was provided by them, right? So this is a way that we're able to set it, right? If they call the set name method and provide a name, it will set the actual name in the method, right? So that property will be set. Next time they call get name, it will get whatever they set it as, right? So that's the idea of having to get and set variables. So we could do a similar sort of thing with the job title and salary, right? So we could say get um, job title and we can say um, set job title. Right, so we could do all of these in the same sort of way. And then maybe we'll try doing something a little bit different with salary, right? So, so get salary is the same sort of idea, right? We could just like return self.salary. But then if I want to set the salary, 
we're gonna go ahead and set it up so that we can actually like um, verify that the salary that they provided was legitimate. So we can say um, if salary is greater than zero, then um, self dot salary equals salary. So that way the only way that they can actually set that value is by giving us a salary that's greater than zero. And then of course we could do something like this. We could say like else um, print uh, salary must be greater than zero, right? So what this does is it allows us to be able to, you know, set what those values should be able to be. You know, someone can't enter a negative salary because we control how they set that salary object up. And you'll see that this idea becomes very important when we work with things like APIs and that sort of thing. Typically, we in initialize objects and that sort of idea, but we don't want to allow people to alter object properties necessarily because they may be able to compromise the security of the objects, right? That's a really common type of security vulnerability, and it's one that gets seen um, over and over. There's been a lot of recent cases of that, especially with Python, because Python doesn't strictly control it. Um, if you take a look at languages like Java, for instance, we have like private and public variables, which allow us to strictly control it. Uh, Python doesn't really have a concept like that. So instead we set up our getters and setters and then we can add further security later, but we won't really worry about that right now. I just wanna give some context behind why we typically wanna do something like that. And of course we could do some more things with the, like getting salary too. Like for instance, if they put in like their weekly amount and we wanna say like, we wanna return the yearly amount, we can like modify it to multiply by 52 or something like that to get like the yearly amount, right? So we can actually modify what they're getting in terms of the salary and what they're setting in terms of the salary. So this gives you an idea of why you may wanna use getters and setters. So now we have an employee object. And the last thing I'm gonna demonstrate here is how we can sort of like use this in another application to be able to um, you know, utilize our employee object and how that sort of looks. So to do this, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to create a main class to try to test this out. So we'll go under new and we'll go to Python and we'll type in main. We'll just create like a general main. And then the first thing we have to do is import our employee objects. So we're going to say from the employee file, we're going to import the employee object. So you see, we're saying from the employee.py file, we're gonna import the employee class so that we can actually use it inside of our application. So now to create a new instance of a class, which will be our object, we can do something like this. We can say test equals employee. And then remember, when we initialize it, we have to provide it with a name, a job title, and a salary. So for instance, I can put in a name of, say, Scott, a job title of, um, say, programmer, and then maybe a salary of, say, I don't know, like 50,000, for instance. And then from here, we can take a look at how our getters and setters will generally work. So um, if I want to, say, get the value of the name, we can do something like this. I can go ahead and say print um, test.getName. And as you remember, when you run get name, it's just gonna get the name property, which in this case was initialized to Scott. So when I run this, you see it gives me back that name, right? Now, if I were to set the value of the name, right, I could say something like test.setName and I can change the name to say, um, I don't know, something like uh, Jeff, for instance. And you'll see what will happen here is it initializes it to say Scott, but then it sets it to say Jeff. And then when we print get name, we should see that it prints out Jeff. So you can see how that changes the property. So each time that we run that, we're just gonna change the property from something else. And then whenever we get that property again, you see that it changes here um, to get name will be Jeff instead of Scott, right? And then it, it, as well, if we were to do something like set salary, we could take a look at how our condition works. So like if I say like set salary um, 1000, and then I'll say like get salary here, you see when we run this, it gets a thousand as the salary. You see I changed 50,000 to a thousand, right? But then I try to put in something like a negative one, for instance, you'll see when I try to run this, it says salary must be greater than zero and it stays at 50,000. So you can see that it only changes the salary now if they input a valid one. So this gives you a general idea of how the getters and setters are able to interact, right? So from this, you can see how you can declare objects from classes. And in doing so, we're able to manipulate different properties of those objects through the getters and setters that we defined. 
Now you'll see that we use this concept a lot in data structures. Things like stacks and queues and trees are all in general just classes, right? And we're gonna have to write up all the methods and properties of them. So understanding the idea of classes is very important for data structures and a lot of other concepts in programming. So this should give you that general idea of how these classes work and set you up with a good foundation for uh, future topics in this area.